Did you know that your roof can make or break your home's comfort, safety, and energy efficiency? Your roof is the first line of defense against the elements. It protects you from weather, controls moisture, manages heat, and when designed right, it can save you a ton of money on energy bills and repairs. But most people make one major mistake when designing their roof and it's costing them big time. My name is Christina and I help property owners regenerate the land, design resilient homes, and connect with nature. So let's dive in. The number one roofing mistake people make is not considering their climate when designing their roof. They find a few features known for energy efficiency and implement them. But not every feature is efficient in every climate. First up, let's look at the main difference between cold and warm roofs. A cold roof has insulation on the inside of the roof deck. The exterior of the roof isn't insulated, which leaves the roof deck itself cold. A cold roof often relies on ventilation to prevent moisture and heat buildup. A warm roof, on the other hand, has insulation on the outside of the structure and usually it has it on the inside too. So this keeps the roof deck warm when the outside temperatures drop. It's also sealed tight, so it's great for energy efficiency and doesn't usually need to be vented. Moisture is a persistent little troublemaker in roofing. Unchecked moisture can lead to mold, rot, and structural damage over time. Moisture most often occurs within your roof in the form of condensation. So let's say you've got a colder temperature that comes in contact with a warmer temperature, aka the dew point, somewhere within the roof deck, condensation will form on that nearest surface. It's like when you've got a cold glass of ice water on a hot day and condensation collects on the glass. The same thing can happen in your roof and it spells trouble. Ideally, we'd keep moisture out of the roof altogether because it's better to prevent moisture than try to dry it out, right? But in most climates, it's practically inevitable that some moisture will find its way into the roof. There are a lot of factors and considerations at play here, but I'll give you the gist of how warm and cold roofs differ when it comes to moisture management. In a warm roof, the insulation is on the outside of the structure, like I mentioned. So along with proper air sealing, this creates a continuous layer that keeps cold temperatures away from the roof deck and its condensing surface. So this helps prevent condensation from forming on the exterior of the roof sheathing. Cold roofs, on the other hand, rely on ventilation to manage moisture and simply dry it out. By keeping the insulation on the inside and leaving a vented air gap above, cold roofs allow airflow to sweep through and carry that moisture out. However, proper vent placement is critical. Poorly designed ventilation can trap moisture instead of expelling it, which leads to the very problems you're trying to avoid. And by the way, this venting strategy doesn't work well in humid climates where the warm air itself carries moisture. In those climates, if we vent, we're inviting moisture into the roof. No thank you. As I mentioned, it's always better to prevent moisture than to try to dry it out. Moisture management often includes some combination of insulation and venting. However, I'm going to touch on a few other considerations. You have so many options when it comes to air barriers and membranes that keep out the water, the vapor, the air, so some membranes are impermeable while others are vapor permeable. They let the, your roof absorb and then release water vapor through the roof assembly. So choosing a vapor permeable or impermeable membrane depends mostly on your climate, but also on the makeup of your roof. Air sealing is critical to not only energy performance, but moisture management. Air leaks can lead to condensation and mold, so make sure there are no gaps in the ceiling and your building envelope is airtight. And again, that's a very basic overview of a really in-depth topic, which I don't really have time to cover in this video today. So just let me know in the comments below if you wanna learn more about this topic. Next, let's talk about venting. Ventilation keeps your roof 
cool and dry. But not all vents are created equal. First up, there are static vents. For example, just an air gap created with furring strips open at either end of the roof, at the fascia and then the ridge. So that's a no fuss option, but they're not great for areas with wildfires or heavy winds. There are also textured membranes that are much thinner that allow some movement through without having to build out a frame ventilation cavity. Next, we have motorized vents, and these are um, they, these still use the traditional furring strip assembly, but you can open or close them depending on the weather. So this is really handy in those fire prone areas to prevent sparks from finding their way into the roof deck. They're also helpful if, if you live in an area vulnerable to tropical storms where wind can sweep through and tear the vented roof basically off a house. And lastly, there are mesh vents with intumescent coatings. <laughs> Sounds fancy, I know. But these are genius for fire prone zones. They expand when they're exposed to heat, which seals off the gaps to keep embers out while still allowing airflow in normal conditions. Now, if you live somewhere with a fire hazard, heavy snow or high winds, you may not have to forego venting entirely. A venting over roof might be your new best friend. So here's how it works. It's essentially a double layered roof. The bottom under roof is unvented, sealed tight to block heat and condensation. So essentially it's a, it's a warm roof. And then the top over roof is vented to handle airflow, snow, and can be mechanically closed off to prevent fires. So why does this matter? Well, for wind, it, if the top layer gets blown off, the sealed under roof is still intact. And then for fire, Motorized vents keep embers out while still letting air circulate. And for snow, it stops ice dams from forming by allowing the snow to melt evenly. What's an ice dam, you ask? Well, let's talk about it. Managing snow isn't about getting rid of it, it's about controlling it. So let's break it down. Ice dams are one of our biggest concerns in cold and snowy climates. An ice dam is what you get when snow and ice melts on the roof, but when the melted snow or the water gets to the eaves, it refreezes because the eaves are no longer in contact with our conditioned building envelope. They stick out into the cold air. Um, and when that melted snow refreezes, it builds up on the eaves and creates a literal dam of ice. Ice dams can cause a lot of damage to the roof and gutters and can even fall onto our structures and basically the people below. Um, they can get pretty dangerous. So there are some tools we can use to prevent ice dams like snow guards and heat cables, but it really starts with your insulation and venting strategy. We want to prevent the roof from warming up so much that it melts the snow. That additional exterior roof insulation keeps the roof deck closer to the outdoor temperatures. However, to do this right, it can take a lot of additional insulation and money. <laughs> Even if there's a generous amount of insulation, um, the roof can still warm up to melt the snow and pose an ice dam risk. So a vented over roof can be a game changer here because you get the benefits of a sealed insulated roof um, for the energy efficiency and moisture management, while the over roof allows for the cold air to flow beneath the roof and carry away any heat that does occur um, that might melt the snow. Okay, now here's the fun part, matching your roof to your climate. Of course, there's a no one size fits all here to roofing. Um, it's actually really complex topic and I have a free online guide that explains it in more detail um, so you can find that in the description below too. But that said, there are a few quick rules of thumb. So in moderate or hot and humid climates, go for warm roofs with a vapor smart membrane that will block the humidity while also avoiding condensation um, if the AC is running. So you can also use um, light colored roofing materials to reflect the heat as well. If you live in a cold and snowy climate, cold roofs with vents are adequate here um, with snow guards for additional safety against ice damming. 
However, warm roofs with exterior insulation are best practice if possible. Also, don't forget to reinforce your roof framing for heavy snow loads. In fire prone areas, a warm roof without a vent, similar to what's required in a hot and humid climate, works well. So just make sure that you use fire rated materials like metal or mineral wool. And in snowy and fire prone areas, you'll want a vented over roof to control ice damming. In addition to a warm roof, with exterior insulation to prevent condensation. The critical factor here is that you make sure to add a manual or motorized vent seal for maximum fire safety. All right, let's wrap this up with some practical tips to make sure your roof design is a success. Number one, know your climate. Do a climate assessment before you start designing so you understand what your roof has to deal with. Uh, number two, work with the experts. Um, roofing isn't necessarily a DIY job, so get professional help on this one. And number three, ventilate smartly. Uh, balance airflow and safety with the right venting system. So plan for snow management, fire prevention, or wind damage. So don't just think about everyday conditions when the weather is nice. Plan for those extremes. Okay, lastly, number four, taking the time to design a roof that fits your home's unique needs will save you from costly repairs and keep your home safe and comfortable for years to come. If you found this video helpful, uh, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more tips on designing your resilient dream home. If you have any questions or tips of your own, please drop them in the comments below. I would love to keep this conversation going. Okay, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.